Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. Reverend Perry Chapman. <laughs>
he's working for Duke Duke Energy now. Uh, he did do a tour in Iraq, and he is uh, he's basically uh, living life down there. But he misses us, and hopefully one of these days. Oh yeah, and and we have a daughter-in-law. Her name is Nikki. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, they've been married how long? Four or five years? Yeah, about five years. So uh, they're very happy, um, we're, and we're, we're, we love them very, very much, and we miss them dearly. Hopefully, God will call them up here as well eventually. Now that he works for Duke Energy, he can transfer. So we're, we're, I, think, I think that's a God thing already at work. So next up, I want to um, bring up Pastor Keith Hopkins. He's going to be our associate, our associate pastor. Come on up, Keith. I'm going to be one of the first kids in your class. Um, yeah, that picture, you know, it's, it's a funny picture because, like, what setting is that in? And what is behind him? It looks like some kind of cell or an amoeba or whatever. Um, I know. I know what it is. Uh, but anyway, you know, I was thinking, and I have two major passions that, that have been in my heart for quite some time. I was called into ministry a long time ago when I first um, accepted Christ at 19. And, um, but anyway, those two passions are a, a life of worship and unity in the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things I know that beats in Barry's heart to uh, in Pastor Scott's heart, you know, unity in the body of Christ. I always got this thought, you know, if, Scripture says that God is coming back, you know, Christ, Jesus is coming back for a unified church. What if we're the ones that are standing in the way for him coming to return? Because we can't unify. Anyway, um, I'm excited to, uh, I'm, I'm sad in one respect because, you know, you're sort of leaving one family outbreak, but we're still part of the family. And I am excited too, like Pastor Scott said, um, about the multiple bodies of believers that will be planted in and around this area and and the community that we'll have all together as well. Thank you, Keith. All right, so our vision statement is discovering Christ, living by faith, and loving people. So let's talk about discovering Christ. We're going to be continually building the DNA of Faith Rising Community Church, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. I forgot. Charlene, come on up here for a second. This is Past Pastor Gee's wife and Ava, of course. And the reason why, the reason why I, I, I had a slide for you, but, you know, I needed you. To, yeah. <laughs> here's, here's Charlene. Well, um, part of my testimony is uh, one day I was selling memberships at a fitness center. And this man walked in and said, told me about my life. And I'm like, what? He said, you're going to marry a minister. I thought the guy was nuts. I said, I don't know any ministers, and I don't think I'd be interested. But guess what? I married a minister. <laughs> so I guess he was right. And um, here we are. I was born, not born in Rock Hill, but I was raised here. So this is actually my hometown. <laughs> and, uh, and I um, got back here about two years ago. And brought him with me <laughs> but we lived in California for over 33 years so um, anyway I'm excited about this new work and I'm excited about the doors that God has been opening for us in this community and it, it feels really good to be back here with all of y'all and I'm excited about the future all right thank you all right so discovering Christ we're gonna continually build the DNA for Faith Rise of Community Church to truly discover Christ with daily experiences. What does that mean? Basically, we want to find new avenues, new ways to attract people that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't normally come to see or come to attend a church. We want to uh, find ways to, uh, through drama, through music, through preaching, uh, we, want, we want to find new ways every day, every Sunday, to bring new people to Christ, um, and and we have um, we have a lot of different people that are starting to really want you know inquire about what's going on and what we're doing, and um, and and later on I'm going to talk about our new location and everything. So that's going to be exciting because that's going to be all part of it. So living by faith is the second one. 
We live out our faith by telling others the saving grace that only Jesus Christ can offer, which is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. He called us to go and make disciples. And the verb, the action verb there, is not go. Everybody thinks it's go. It's make. We've got to make disciples. Carol and I are very, very passionate about discipleship, about raising disciples. And basically, we want to have, we're, we're going to have uh, faith groups, which is what we're going to call them. Other, other churches call them small groups, but they're going to be called faith groups. And these faith groups are going to be, uh, are going to have studies that are targeted to building discipleship, building up disciples by uh, teaching them how to witness, teaching them how to defend their faith, teaching them how to pray better, those sort of things. These are the thing, these are the key avenues that we feel that will make strong Christians in the, in the body of Christ. Our third one is loving people. We're going to love on people who need it the most. People just like us. It, there's not enough love in the world. A lot of what we see on TV is not a racial problem. And Scott said it this morning, it's a sin problem. And, and if we don't love people enough to tell them that they're living the wrong life or they're, they're going down the wrong path. You know, Penn Teller one time said, and you all knew Penn, Penn and, not Penn Teller, Penn, Gillette Penn, that's his name. Yeah, Penn Gillette, that's his name. Anyway, <clears throat> he said that one day at the end of a show, somebody gave him a Bible that said in the, in, that said in the inner inside of it, it was inscribed, it said, you know, I hope you find Jesus in your path. And um, I love you. And he signed his name. And, he, and he, he said, this is the first time someone has ever given him a Bible and witnessed to him. And, he, and Penn Jillette's an atheist, big time atheist. He's a real advocate. But he, what he said next really stung. And he said, how much do you have to hate someone to not witness to them, or he calls it proselytize them. How much do you have to hate them? Because, you know, that was the first person in the thousands or millions that he's people of the, he, that he has met. You know, all those people that he's met, that's the first person in years that has given him a Bible and witness to him. So we want to love on people. We want to witness to people. We want to give them the knowledge that Jesus is the only way the truth and the life to the Father. Um, it's our desire to truly be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. Um, we want to work with other churches in the area, and even not in the area. October 22nd, Carol and I are, are helping out a bunch of churches out in Sharon for their fall festival. And that's not even in our demographic area, but it's kingdom work. Scott, and Scott mentioned earlier that it's all about the kingdom. It's not about the kingdom of Barry or the kingdom of Scott. It's the kingdom of God. And it's the capital C church that we need to really, really focus on. So what does that look like? We're called to reach and minister to the millennials, the, the, the 30 and unders. That's a target because they are the fastest growing number of people who do not know Jesus. We desire to have an avenue of faith for the students of Winthrop University and Clinton College as well. And Susie going to Winthrop is really a God thing because now, you know, she's got, we want to team up with BCM, which is the, what's it called? Baptist, Baptist Collegiate Ministries. And we want to team up with them and have those kids have a place to go on Sunday mornings for church. Now, do they hold services or is it just Thursday nights? Okay. So we want to be an avenue of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, my plan is to get in touch with the, uh, with the leader of BCM and get, get a hold of them. We have a genuine passion for the homeless and a hurting of this world. Matthew 25, 35 says, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. We want to help the homeless. We want to team up with the Pilgrim Inn 
and have service projects and help the homeless. We want to do that. It is a, it, it, and, and our 10 year plan or pie in the sky kind of dream is to have, um, to, to buy an old hotel and renovate it and, and turn it into a reinsertion place where people are that, that, are, in, that are homeless will get scholarships set up with, um, what's the, uh, York Technical College so that they can have a career and then we can give them the gospel as we go and they can serve in the church and learn about who Jesus is. We also have a passion to end human trafficking. Charlotte, North Carolina and Atlanta, Georgia are the two largest avenues of human trafficking in the eastern seaboard. I don't know why, but it is. Um, during Super Bowl, there are, I think the statistic was there were, there were about a thousand victims of human trafficking in Charlotte during the Super Bowl. So that's got to stop. These people have to be free. We are called by God to make an impact for our communities in the city with events like block parties and hurting areas, as well as assist other churches in York County, as I mentioned earlier, to help the kingdom. You know, we realize that it's never about us. It never will be. It's never going to be about us. It's going to be about it's going to be about who's outside of the doors. It's going to be about the mission field out there. It's about expanding the kingdom of God, and it's not a competition. And we're also, as Keith mentioned earlier, we want to break through denominational and racial barriers. We want to go beyond. We want to unite. We're called to unite our city, our country, our county, and the world. We desire to live as Christ commanded, love God with all our heart and soul and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves, Matthew twenty two thirty seven. This is absolutely, the, it, it's the two greatest commandments, according to, the, according to our Lord. And I'll tell you what, we need, to, we need to really think about how we can unite our nation. First of all, this morning, uh, Scott led the entire church in prayer for what's going on in Charlotte. Charlotte's just a symptom of a bigger problem. And we need to pray about it. We need to pray for those people. And we need to pray for the people in our community and reach out. Um, we went to a, a one body conference a couple weeks ago, and it was about unification in the, in, in the church. And when we get to heaven, if God retains our pigment of skin, it's not going to look like the church it is today. It's not going to be separated. We're going to be all mixed up, just like these chairs are. I don't know if you notice. These, we have black and gray chairs here, okay? They're all mixed up. They're all, they're all intertwined. Of course, we have a, a section of, you know, wannabes over here. They just, they just want to be by themselves. But everybody else, it's all, it's all intertwined. And that's the way the kingdom needs to be. That's the way the church needs to be. So our planting event We've chosen to, to call this planting event, God is on the move. Our location that we're gonna be meeting at is the Rock Hill Community Theater, located on 546 South Cherry Road. Why does that say with an N? Oh, Sweet N, Sweet N in Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you could scroll through some pictures. <coughs> it seats 90 people. And we have the auditorium there from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday mornings. We have availability to use it more times, but we have to coincide with their schedule as well. So uh, if they have a production going on, we, we need to respect that. And But, you know, we can have, they have a full kitchen. Uh, they have areas for children's teaching, where, where, which is where Susie is going to be. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, they have a great stage. We're going to install our sound equipment in there as well and leave it there for them to use. We want a partnership between them. We don't want to uh, have an us and them mentality. We want to make sure that, that 
it's a good marriage. So um, Carol and I were just talking the other day about, you know, how in one week, everything has just come together. So another thing that I want to announce is our website, faithrisingchurch.com. Um, it's live and it's, it's, it's looking great. Nathan back there, he's, uh, he's been helping us out with, uh, with getting it set up for us. And, uh, just, I've just been humbled by, by his, his servitude and everything. So it's really, really been a great thing. And, uh, it's still a work in progress, but we're going to, you know, go and check it out and see what you think. Give us some feedback. So question and answer time. Does anybody have any questions? And Keith is out the door. <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, excellent. Good thinking. That's why we make a good team. Anybody have a question? Anybody? What's your view of the Bible? 100% true. It, it is the inerrant word of God, breathed out, breathed out word of God. It is, it is, um, I, I, people can try and find errors in it, but it's 100% true. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you looking for locations permanently in the Newport area? Um, permanently, it's where God leads us. But right now, um, this this location is on a southern fringe of where our demographic is. Our demographic is South Cherry Road or Cherry Road and North. And yes, we would love to be in a Newport area, uh, but there's not a lot of buildings out there that can accommodate a church. So. Um, what we want to do is uh, go where God leads us. And if, if this Rock Hill Theater thing turns into a five-year relationship, and I'm, I'm okay with that because they've been, they've, they're so gracious. They came to us. We didn't go to them. And, and so that's, that's another God thing, I think, because we really, uh, we've been searching and searching and looking everywhere. And then when, when I was approached and, and told Carol about it, and it's like everything just clicked. And it's just... God working. Um, so, you know, if, if eventually we'd love to open up a new Newport church, but it just depends on opportunity. And what kind of needs do we do you currently have as far as uh, I mean, you've got the building location, looks like you've got you know, light, sound equipment, things like that. Is there other things that you need? Um, I would say, oh, goodness, marketing. I mean, we, we, we're going to be, we're going to need some marketing. We need initial startup cost. Um, you know, there is startup cost, even though we're, we're, we're moving into an already set up place. Uh, there's going to need, there's going to be a need for, um, like I said, marketing and, and basically our brochure, you know, our, our, our handouts every, every Sunday we're going to be handing out the, you know, the, the bulletins, church bulletins. Um, so, you know, just, just a, a small monetary amount. I'm thinking, you know, no more than three or three to five thousand dollars, you know, at this point. People. So, yeah, and people, yeah, and people. Thank you. Anybody else? Was that the old West End School? It was. <laughs> it was the old West End School. You went there? Oh, we're having a reunion here. <laughs> This is like what forty year union, I think. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. We went to high school together. That is amazing. I don't know if have we seen each other since. No. I don't think so. <laughs> Small world, yeah, yeah. Right. See, now this blows my mind. <laughs> Seriously, it really doesn't mind. I mean, we grew up here because you run into people that you hadn't seen in twelve at Walmart all the time. Remember Laddie Parish? Yeah. Ran into him 
you hadn't seen him. He <laughs> this happens more than you might think. I mean, we grew up in Rock Hill. We're going to run into each other. Yeah. My, wow. What blows my mind is we, you still live in Rock Hill, and I do too, and it's been 40 years almost. Oh, well, okay. But still, seven. <laughs> well, good to see you again. <laughs> Wow. So um, one thing that we're going to be doing is like we're, we're going to be drama heavy. We're going to have a drama department. Uh, Keith and well, Keith and Charlene. Well, Keith and Charlene are both both involved with the theater. Keith is a professional actor. Charlene is a professional stage professional stage manager. So we're going to be doing a lot of drama work there. Um, instead of uh, showing videos, we're going to have skits. We're going to be. We're, we're, it's going to be live. It's going to be live, not entertainment, but live illustration. So I'm really, I'm really excited about uh, what we want to do. You know, the thing is, uh, I mentioned before. I didn't mention before, but I've, I mentioned to you guys before um, that we wanted the barn on Selenese Boulevard. That's that's still a dream. That's still a vision. You know, it, it just the owner doesn't want to budge. No, no, it's not. Um, it's uh, someone else. Um, Callahan is his last name. So, and, uh, you know, if it, it'll take about $200,000 to, huh? The auction place, yeah. No, no, it's, it is, it is messed up on the inside. Yeah, but it'll take, it'll take a lot. But that's, that's something that, you know, we, we have a we have a passion for that. It's kind of like what we want to do. Our 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 vision for eventually, whenever we do have our own building, is to have a rustic feel. You know, with Edison lighting around. Um, you know, pallets. You make those, really? See, again, not an accident. <laughs> Nothing is by chance with God, and and so we that's. I'll have to, we'll have to show you. Carol will have to show you on her Pinterest what we're looking, what we're looking at and everything because, you know, and we want to have a casual feel, casual setting. And, and eventually, if when we do have our own building, we want to do Friday night, um, uh, every once in a while, we're going to Friday night productions for real-life situational uh, issues that happen with people. And uh, Keith is a playwright, so he's, he's writing, he started writing plays already, so he was telling me one about... Uh, that he's writing right now. Are you still writing that one? Well, just the idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really wonderful. But um, that's where we want to uh, be drama heavy. Carol and I are, are theater junkies. We we love the theater. Uh, we don't act. We love to watch the theater. We don't act, but we do love to watch the theater. We we I think we've seen every one of your plays. We need to. We, yeah, we're groupies. So, but yeah, and and we love we love the the arts, and um, also another thing that the theater that the Rock Hill Theater is going to let us do is they're going to let us put flyers up in their door where where people are going out. It's going to say you know Faith Rising Community Church meets here at ten thirty on Sundays. So these people that are going to the theater, they're going to they're going to see that on every one of their shows that go through. So that's another thing that's really it's just how God is working in our lives, how God is moving in our lives. It's just a humbling experience. January 15th is our launch date. We're going to be commissioned here January 8th. That's when Scott, as Scott was talking about before, we're going to be um, uh, lined up here in front, and, and uh, he's going to pray for us and bless us, and, and then it goes to work. As Jordan says, going to give us the boot. <laughs> I just saw that. Um, so we're going to be commissioned now, and January 15th at 10.30 a.m. Is, is the time. And we're expecting a, I'm, I'm expecting a really, really good turnout for that first service and, and then on. So we're, we're just excited about it. And uh, we're going to see what happens in the next couple of months uh, with us and, and just allow God to lead us in everything that we do. Well, we have a Facebook page. For Faith Rising Community Church, um, we're going to do updates. This video is going to go on there. It's going to go on our website, and we're going to share it as well. And just share the video, share share um, the opening date. Just keep up on Facebook and everything. Else 
something else that we've been doing as well, and specifically toward our Florida people that have been helping us out financially or donating to the church or that have um, just been praying for the church is we've been doing um, newsletters. Yeah. And so we would do, an, you know, do newsletter updates and send them and things like that. So if anybody's interested in receiving a newsletter, let us know. We'll, we'll be sure to get that to you too. But. Oh, there you go. That's a good idea. But yeah, so we've been keeping our, you know, because we came here from Florida, we've been trying to keep the people that have been praying for us and supporting us in Florida, keeping them in the loop and, and let them know what's going on as well. So that's something else we've been doing as far as getting the word out there is, is our newsletter. All right. That's and fine. we'll hit up the other Sunshine State. <laughs> there you go. All our friends in California. Yeah. I know we've got quite a few people planning on taking a trip up here. Um on January 15th and they're going to there's quite a few families that are going to just fly up and, and, and just enjoy that celebration time of celebration for us you know, and everything um, so does anybody have anything else? Uh, you also have a an address for donations yes it's on the back of the brochure that we handed out it's P.O. Box 37500 Rock Hill, South Carolina Two nine seven three two. I'm cut off. I felt like I just felt like the Grammy Awards or the Emmys, you know, where they where I talk too much and then the music starts. I'm like, that's what that just felt like. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Well, if that's it, let's go ahead and pray together and. Uh, we welcome you to um, help us out in any way. You know, let me know. Let Carol know uh, what you can do because there are a lot. There's a lot of stuff that we can be doing in between now and then. Uh, one thing we are looking for is some elders. Yeah, we do need some elders. So right now, it's just me, just Keith and I. So, <laughs> so being some wise people. Biblical elders, not necessarily gray hairs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so wrong. And he's older than me. <laughs> Even though he doesn't look it, he looks like he's younger than me. So it's amazing. But anyway, um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and pray, and and uh, and I'll let y'all go, and then I can then be cut off with the music. So, <laughs> Father, Lord God, we thank you for just uh, an amazing day, an amazing night, Father, and thank you for the folks that came out tonight to to see what we're all about, Father. Lord God, I pray that you would um, give us uh, direction and wisdom in, in all that we do, Father. Um, I pray that you would uh, speak to the hearts of people uh, in this community um, to join us in this new adventure, Father. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, just give us a, a calm in our hearts as we, as we step forward with our faith, totally relying on you, Father. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now cue the music. Thank you.